Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. i uh, got the Sequoia here again, and I'm going to kind of go over the changes I made to it since the last time you saw it. I'm also going to show how I fit 35-inch tires on 2-inch lift with very minimal, if any, uh, rubbing at all. So let's get into it. As you see from before, I have the Sherpa rack on it, full-length rack. Uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best ones for the Sequoia. Um, noxious bird. I'm also running the Tough Stuff Overland Alpha. I'm also running the Tough Stuff Overland Alpha tent. Uh, this is one of the first, uh, I think it was actually the second production ones to come out. So I got it pretty early on. I had it on the tundra, had it in the barn for a year and a half um, before putting it on here. So hopefully we can get out there in some uh, future videos and I can show you. Uh, Pros and cons, good, bad, ugly about it. So on the front here, I am running, again, a Total Chaos Upper Control Arms, just like I am with the Tundra, just like I do with the 4Runner. I'm also running the Old Man Emu 2-inch lift from uh, First Gen Off-Road. I will say Josh over at First Gen Off-Road, uh, amazing, uh, amazing customer service. So he got the product out quick, had him build the front shocks, uh, assemble the front shocks, putting the top pad and the coil, all that. Since I don't have a spring compressor, um, I didn't want to go down that and, yeah, mess with those things. So, easier just, uh, you could pay a little extra and have him assemble them for you. Um, but I like the way the front sits. I like the height here. I'm running the, for the first time I'm trying these out, the Kinda clever cleaver uh, rts and 35 by 10 and a half inch i like the idea of a tall skinny tire um, especially since i'm not re-geared i live outside denver so i'm at higher elevation so hopefully able to just retain some of the power um, i did take it out the normal daily driving perfectly fine not re-gearing going on the higher elevation mountain passes that's where i ran to issues um, not really issues, but just it needed a little bit more. So I do hope to re-gear this thing one day. Um, and whether I go with 12 and a half uh, wide tires one day or jump up to 37s, who knows. Um, but for now, the 10 and a half is great. It gives me that extra inch of ground clearance than the 33. Um, and being 10 and a half inches wide, you run into less rubbing issues than you would with a 12 and a half tire. So I do have the stock wheels on still. Not ideal, just again, kind of trying to keep this thing a little budget friendly. Uh, I went with the Spider Tracks inch and a quarter wheel spacers, which if you are running 35s, you will need to run the wheel spacers or else your upper control arm and tire will rub. All right, so to get these to not rub, I actually didn't do that much. Um, I did do the pinch weld mod. So if you can see in here, so you see in here, I basically just, uh, if it focuses, let's get this. Um, I basically just hammered this down. I didn't even cut it. Um, a lot of people will cut a slit and hammer it down. I just took a hammer and cut it. To do that, you do need to take off the inner fender liner. So you can see here, I don't have my inner fender liner. Rural life, got some cows. And that's what Nico does every day. Cows come, he barks. Gets his exercise in. Here's a little better shot with the wheel turned. So, a little bit of clearance in there. Um, I mean, it does, it's close. I can still get my fingers through here, um, but at compression, will it rub? It didn't on a trip that I did. So I did also, on because I have the running board here, I did take a heat gun to it and just kind of push it back, kind of like that. Um, wasn't too hard, so that just, it barely scraped here. So instead of cutting it up, I just took a heat gun to it. 
on the passenger side. I did have to cut. Um, you kind of see where the edges here. I did. I'll try to brighten it up more in post. Um, I did cut the inner fender liner because you can't for the back side because of the pinch weld. So here's the same on the passenger side. Um, but I basic Nico. Nico's having an anxiety attack. Got a baby. So I did keep the front half to third of the inner liner here. Um, I trimmed it kind of right here. So you still have this bottom part clear. So the front uh, tire does clear. Um, and then about, uh, you can see halfway in the fender. So that is to protect the air intake. Um, if you have water scenarios. So the opening for the uh, air intake is just right here. So I did keep that just to keep you know water and everything from splashing up there could water get in there probably um, but for now it works um, I don't have a snorkel or anything like that so the last thing you have to do to make 35s fit so you have the so you have the pinch weld the running boards if you have running boards uh, inner fender liner except for passenger side where you need to cover for the air intake um, the last little thing I did was just I just rounded this right here just to clear uh, I believe it does go straight in and out so it was literally taking off about an inch of material here so um, that's really all I did with the wheel spacers um, again the ten and a half inch tires are narrower um, so you have a one inch per side less you have to worry about uh, rubbing the frame. The only time I've had it rub is turning one direction full lock. I could feel it just rub the uh, back side of the frame rail. I forgot which side it does, but it's so minimal. Um, and it's if I really have the wheel cranked. Um, but other than that, works fine. And here's a better, uh, better look at the lift. So, old man emu shock, total chaos upper control arm. I did go through and change the lower ball joint while I was in there. Highly recommended. So much different light. Uh, highly recommended to replace the lower ball joint while you're in there and have everything apart. Um, just saves you trouble of a broken, uh, just search up Toyota broken lower ball joint. And uh, yeah, you'll see plenty of pictures of why you want to avoid that. Um, but other than that, the front suspension has been great. Uh, back, I will show you. Can't really see much, but uh, yeah, just a shock in the coil. So I do think I'll need to get a heavier spring for the rear. Um, it looks good like this. I have the 10 on, sits fine. Once I load it up. So once you load it down though, it squats too much. Um, I'm not a fan of that, so. I do need to get a heavier spring. I don't want it bottoming out when I'm just driving down the highway. So that's to come. Um, I do need to build drawers for it and I don't know where it's gonna sit um, in relation. So I wanna get those built and then I'll figure out the spring. But those are pretty easy to swap out. All right, interior mods. Show you the back first. Have no interior. So sorry of my rear blower fan not working. Uh, wasn't blowing any air. So I did change. There's a the blower motor resistor here and then the blower motor fan. I did replace both because those are both things that could have gone out. Um, chased the wire all the way to the front and I realized that when I was doing it, basically it had, uh, had voltage drop. Couldn't hold the load when I put the, when I put the motor on, basically the voltage dropped to near zero. Basically, that means it was a broken wire or bad connection, something like that. But I was running down, checking each connection, seeing where the brake was. Found out that on the underside of the fuse box, the connector, it looked like the fuse failed and it melted the connector um, and the wire. So I ended up running its own separate wire. But anyways, long story short, while I was doing that, 
Um, I realized how gross the carpet was as I was peeling it up. Everything was just nasty underneath, slimy. And then I realized that the carpet needed cleaning. Um, so I ended up just taking everything out. That way I can clean it outside of the car. Uh, I did buy a carpet cleaner to just kind of go through and, and do that. So while I had the carpet out, I figured pretty much there's gonna be no other time that I will have the carpet out that hopefully I don't want to. Um, I took out way too much interior, <laughs> but uh, is at, at a certain point it's just easier to take the chairs out and then, well, while I had the carpet out, might as well add some sound deadening. So I did get the kill mat uh, sound deadening. Not too sure how it works. I'll link down below what I got. Um, it's high rated, seems like best bang for your buck for sound deadening um, without spending too much money because sound deadening can get expensive. I don't need anything too crazy, but I did figure I had the opportunity. So I was going to take it and basically, uh, yeah, did everything. So I will be doing the doors too, um, but I just haven't got to it yet. I got to a point where I could put the interior back in so I can actually drive the car. Um, it's been sitting like this for a couple weeks now between uh, the blower fan uh, disassembly and now having the interior out. Um, there was, yeah, it's been down for a couple weeks. The video before this I just posted, that was actually filmed a few months ago. Um, just never got around to editing it. Uh, I do have the motivation to get back into my videos and going on travel. Uh, I do know it's now fall, or coming up on fall. I do want to go um, and try to get on some trips, even if it's longer distance. Just if it's if the dogs get too car sick for that, then uh, well, if Nico gets too car sick for that, then um, maybe I'll try to go and do some trips uh, without the dogs. So. We'll see, but I do want to get back out there. I do want to start making videos. I'm trying to get this thing up to speed real quick so we can go. Um, I do want to start building the drawers for it. Not that I need the drawers to go on a trip, um, but I just, I had to do this stuff before I did the drawers, especially the lower motor fan, because once I put drawers in here, I don't want to take them out unless I absolutely have to. But the way I'm going to build them, I'm going to try to do it in a way that, uh, I'm going to try to do it in a way that uh, they can be pulled out in sections, make it a little easier. The way I was doing it on the Tundra, when I built this, when I had the sides in there, it would have been a pain to pull everything out if I ever had to. So, lesson learned. I'm going to try to make this more modular, um, come out in sections. Uh, like I said before, I want to do the the 60% seat, I want to have that as a separate drop-in piece I could take out, so that way I can put the rear seat back in. As you can see, it's literally just four bolts holding the back seats in, each back seat. So and they're really easy to access. So it's been fun catching you guys up. Um, glad you can follow me along with my, my build a little bit. Um, hoping I'm kind of just in a rush trying to get this thing so I can go out and uh, enjoy it before the snow starts coming back uh, i know it's coming up quick um uh, but hopefully i can even you know get a little further away to kind of get away from the snow i appreciate you watching and make sure you subscribe because i do have a few other videos planned um that i want to try to get out soon and since i kind of took those hiatuses uh yeah youtube isn't a fan of pushing my videos out so if you can hit that thumbs up and that will kind of push it and show that people are watching it um i'd appreciate it all right, see you guys on the next one.